concept of AI, like I said initially, was tech robots and those kind of things, deadly things. But since time and technology, the way we've been using AI is kind of changed. Siri, how's everything going? That may be beyond my abilities at the moment. Yeah, so. This is kind of changing the way people are perceiving AI. They're starting to understand that it's not exactly something dangerous. It's just like electricity, pretty much. It's going to revolutionize every single thing that's about to come into the industry. You're talking about uh, every, pretty much, devices already have uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning running in the background. Big example of that is most of your Google products and services are uh, fixed with machine learning algorithms already. But the best thing is the fact that it can be applied to existing startups and companies. So if you already have a product and you're thinking, why is this relevant to me, is the fact that once you add a component of machine learning algorithm to your product or service, it actually becomes a more smarter device. And personally, I would advise you to do that before your competitors do, because if you don't, then they'll have a better product by the end of the day. As we're talking about AI today, we, what we need to look at is that humanity and technology is, is, is merging. And, and the entire philosophy that I have is it's way less about technology anymore, and it's actually all about humanity. But it's 90, 80 to 90 percent about humanity. And we shouldn't really get bogged down on the technical side, because that's really doing well. It's the humanity side that we are missing out on. 50, 60, 70 years, we've just been looking at Intel inside and technology inside and AI inside. Forget all of that. Not forget. That's all going to be there. But the focus for us is about putting humanity inside. And that is going to be the future because technology doesn't have ethics. Technology doesn't have conscience. Technology doesn't have relevance. Technology doesn't have intuition. These are the things that we have. So the way we position uh, artificial intelligence or the way we, we try to uh, uh, comprehend artificial intelligence is giving the applications and giving the computing power a human side. And that human side, the human knowledge, uh, you know, falls under these three pillars, uh, reasoning, understanding, and interacting. Reasoning being able to, uh, to form conclusions and uh, uh, learn and understanding, basically understanding and interpreting the meaning of that data, be it text, voice, uh, or gestures. And lastly, interacting. So being able to interact with people in a natural way, this is where the next generation applications will be, not just having uh, uh, the regular input methods. I read an article two days ago um, as well uh, about Microsoft. The AI team grew to 8,000 people in less than two years. And I, I think as well other companies like Google and Facebook and, uh, and IBM and everyone who's working uh, towards the AI uh, uh, sphere, I think their, uh, their teams are growing exponentially as well so they can uh, follow up and at least uh, try to provide uh, the hungry uh, uh, minds and hungry resources out there for those capabilities. So when I was asked by DTEC to speak about this, I first thought that they were smoking something. Uh, but then later, it transpired that they wanted me to speak on the economic consequences of artificial intelligence. And I said, OK, I'll take a crack at that. Robots and automation definitely increase productivity and competitiveness. They enable companies to stay ahead of their competition, and particularly SMEs, small and medium enterprises, who can now compete with big firms on an equal footing. Artificial intelligence is to SMEs what the year 2000 was to tech startups back then, in, in the year 2000 when you had the dot-com boom. If you recall, at that time, two people sitting in a garage with a computer and an internet connection could do what AT&T, France Telecom, and all these other giants uh, were doing with masses of capital and masses of employees. So now, today, with artificial intelligence, I believe uh, SMEs will now be able to compete on an equal footing. Uh, faster product development and delivery, for sure. And bringing back parts of the supply chain that were previously outsourced. Now you bring them back to your home country. I think the greatest threat to autom employment is not automation as such. It's more the ability to remain competitive. And increased productivity is the key to remaining competitive and creating new jobs and creating increased demand. Just to understand where you personally stand as well with regards to that, how do you feel? Well, I, I'd say that uh, there is fear. Uh, fear of two things. One is, of course, the economic aspects like unemployment. But I think the fear of things going out of control is, is my biggest fear. Unless there's proper regulation, we could have robots running amok on the streets. Regulation, in my opinion, is not something always bad, yes. But 
that shouldn't hinder the development. It shouldn't be a process that acts, that's actually intervening with the progress of AI. Because we're using AI just to do tasks more simpler. I'm not going to sit down and calculate my GPS location. It's just easier for me to for my phone to do it. There are some tasks I don't need to waste my time because I can instead prioritize and do other things instead. I think that if you look at the, the, uh, the sort of uh, generation that's going to succeed us, uh, our children and maybe their children, uh, they're very adaptive. They, they, they've adapted to technology much faster than we have or we ever can. And, and this is going to be like bread and butter, I think, to them, okay, as they, as they grow with it. Uh, for us, it's a, it's a shock to the system to, to realize that uh, jobs may go, jobs may stay, whose job is going to go. For them, it's nothing. If this doesn't work, I'll try something else. If that doesn't work, I'll try something else. If you look at uh, the new graduates who are coming out of universities, most of them, uh, after they reach a certain level of education, most of them don't take the traditional kind of jobs that people take. They go into their own business, they go into startups. So that tells you that things are, even their minds are changing and the next generation will be able to adapt to this much quicker, much easier than we can. Where do you see artificial intelligence in five to 10 years? I do think there might be a new industry entirely or new workforce coming out of this. Mm -hmm. Like for example, data analytics was not even a job till recently, but mm -hmm. because of data actually being able to store on cloud and all those services, it's coming about then I think artificial intelligence might start having its own form of jobs and its own form of supervision. The richer countries will benefit from the growth of AI and ML because they have the means to absorb uh, la displaced labor, should that happen. The poorer countries cannot do that. But the poorer countries don't necessarily have to adopt artificial intelligence to the scale that the, the advanced countries are, are planning to, to do. What do they need it for, right? If you're employing uh, 300,000 workers in the textile garment industry and, and people are buying the garments that you export out of your country, then keep the 300,000. Why do you need a robot to stitch clothing just because somebody says it's a good idea? So when Elon Musk talks about robots going berserk on the street, he's talking about the United States. What does a person in uh, Mongolia or in uh, Myanmar think about that? It's, it's happening there in one part of the world or in several small parts of the world, but the rest of the world is completely oblivious to artificial intelligence. My colleagues and I and everyone that I'm in touch with, we're using AI to benefit people as much as we can. Our intention is to apply it in the benefit of humanity in whatever way we can. But generally, I still think it's still very young and new to be stopped down and feared upon for the time being, because we have a very small miniature version of it so far. Let's let it grow for a bit and into more controlled environment, definitely, but let it grow and see where it goes for the time being.